Hello everyone, I am MTG Canuck, and tonight it's yet another pack battle, but with a different face. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Welcome everyone to this uh, pack war or pack battles. Is it pack battles or pack war? I can't remember. I like pack battles. Pack battles. So welcome to the pack battles tonight. Tonight uh, we decided to do a set that is near and dear to both of our hearts. Um, I think I actually had the choice, but we both agreed that it was amazing. So it's going to be Cons of Tarkir. Yes. Now, uh, tell us why Cons is special for you, and then I'll go into why it's special for me. My magic existence starts with Cons of Tarkir. So that's the biggest point of it at all for me. How about yourself? I feel like yours is substantially more special than mine. Cons is special for me because it was the point where I decided I want to really start playing Magic again. Uh, I started playing a standard, actually, uh, back when it was uh, Ravnica Theros block, yes. yes. And then uh, into Cons of Tarkir. So I, I was really started playing Magic again. I hadn't really stopped playing Magic since then uh, because I had multiple times where I'd play Magic and then stop playing Magic for three years and then play Magic. And Cons was the point where I was like, okay, I'm not going to stop playing Magic anymore. So. So we have five booster packs, and we're gonna go back and forth each opening our pack at a time. And we like to talk about what the cards uh, attraction choice and relevancy are. So we can talk about money, because really it's a big part of the competition we have here. Specifically, uh, specific, specifically in Cons of Tarkir, because there are the, there's half of the fetch land cycle in this set. So, exactly. Definitely money. <laughs> Definitely some money there. And you know, there's always the possibility of having a foil version of it too, which is even spicy. Ooh. Yeah, and hey, Sasha. you have five packs, I have five packs. Honestly, someone has to score a fetch. Let, let's, let's hope so. Because there are we, I would be very sad if neither of us got, <laughs> neither yeah. us got a fetch land. Outside of the fetch lands though, we do have a variety of other cards that are actually worth a little bit of money here. So we have Clever Impersonator, which is the, the next most expensive card. This card is seen play in Commander. Uh, I'm not sure, do you play Commander at all? I have one Commander deck, so I don't really play Commander much. I have one vanilla deck that I bought that was pre-built. It was the black-white uh, enchantment-driven deck. Well, I can't remember what the commander's name is, Draxus or something like that. I can't remember what his name is. That's how much I pay Commander. <laughs> Fair I'll think of it after. Someone knows out there, someone knows, but yes. You know so. what they say, leave a comment below what that <laughs> commander is and what that deck name is. <laughs> I just remind myself the other day of what his name is. I'll have it, I'll have it before the end of this, for sure. Right. Tell us a little then, more about a few other Chase Mythics. Uh, so the next one we have is Soren, which I actually think I have a copy of them right up here. So this is one of the cards we're actually gonna be aiming to get. I'm not sure if you can see that, there's some glare. Yeah, there's They're perfect. So Soren, uh, he sees play in a variety of modern decks and a bunch of other uh, random decks out there. So he sees fringe play. I'm going to say fringe, but he actually sees a fair amount of play. Uh, specifically in black, white tokens and modern if you're playing modern. And I think in a little bit of legacy here and there. Super, really good card. Obviously, Planeswalker, usually worth a little bit of money. Hardened Scales itself. Uh, an affinity deck you had mentioned, right? Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the currently uh, in modern, the affinity deck kind of changes around regularly, and the current flavor of the uh, month or flavor of the year for uh, uh, for affinity in modern is actually hardened scales affinity. So it's a, a deck where you're using hardened scales to get extra to extra counters on god cards, and then you're swinging in for lethal essentially. So, and we have also the brood hooded hydra. And oddly enough, a vampire token, which... Yes, actually, the vampire token is an interesting story behind it as well. So the vampire token is actually really expensive because it is the vampire token that Soren creates with one of his abilities. Now, in the set, it was actually one of the most rare, if not the single most rare token in the set because it was only being created by Soren. So that token is $2 each. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we open up one of those. And interestingly enough, it's actually worth a f uh, more than a few of the mythics in the set. Go figure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's what there's three mythics that are worth more than it. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. So uh, I think uh, I can't hold back anymore. I really want to hear those packs cracking. What do you think, Adrian? Let's let's go for it. Let's go for it. I'll give you okay. honor. I will start us off. So I'm going to start off with uh, this guy right here. Uh, because I don't even know the name of the card that is on it, and I feel like we'll go with the least lucky pack first. So let me let me crack this guy open and see if we get anything of interest. And I apologize to your viewers in advance uh, because my viewers know that I butcher the name of cards. So uh, it's going to be mispronunciations everywhere. So 
Uh, the first thing we got, we got Smite the Monsters, Glacier Stalker, Right of the Serpent, uh, Saga Archer, Lens of Clarity, War Behemoth, uh, Scourge Baron. Fun little fact, these guys right here, actually worth um, like a little bit of money. Um, they're played in Popper. They're like the one of the best Popper lands. So um, I'm going to count that as a, as a minor hit. Okay, right there. I did not know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Embodied Spring, uh, Act of Treason, Efrend War, Weapon Master, uh, Mist Fire Weaver, uh, Swin Step Citadel, which is an okay card. Uh, this is my first, un uh, first uncommon. So, first uncommon. Second uncommon is High Spire Mantis. Uh, that's a, a dud of an uncommon there. And then my rare is Saga Mauler, or S Saga Mauler? <laughs> it's this guy. So, uh, and it's, I don't see, think it sees any play. So, uh, no fun for me. And then I got a goblin token. Okay. No foils for All right. me. Is there any other uh, popper staples that are in the set that you can think of? Because normally uh, I, I skip to the uncommons, but if there's a few out there, that's... Specifically the lands. Specifically okay. the, like the basic lands. Because the thing is, they're a, double, they're a dual land. So they produce two colors and you gain one life. Uh, so, I mean, that, the one life is I mean, a tiny bit of extra life, I guess. Well, sure. <laughs> that's that's the sure. whole thing. All right, so we have... <clears throat> we have Shatter. We have... Firehound Calvary. We have... Archer's Parapet. We have a Dutiful Return. Uh, Mystic of the Hidden Way. Summit Prowler. Uh, a Dual Land or Rugged Highlands. Like, again, is this a, a popper staple? Yeah, it's a popper staple. Um, probably, it's probably worth the 75 cents. All right. Which, not bad, I guess. Not bad. <laughs> Better than some cards in Ultimate Masters. I mean, it might be more, more than one or two mythic rares in this set. <laughs> Kill shot. We have Sultai Banner. And our first, um, yes, our first uncommon is River Wheel Aerialis, Teamer Charm. Mm. Our third un uncommon is Sultai Soothsayer. And our first rare is Trap Essence. So. Trapped essence. Unfortunately, your rare is as good as my rare. I think we are both tied for least amount of money. I have a morph token and a foil, um, just a regular green light. Hey, hey, regular forest foils are worth money. Dollar? I tell you. I'm sure they're worth money. If people want to foil out just regular basic lands in their deck. It's the way to go. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to put up the next pack here. We'll see. Do it. Good luck. See what we get here. I'm going to skip through the, the, the comments a little bit faster this time rather than reading them all off. Sounds so good. anyone that's watching on my camera, you guys can uh, see what I'm doing here because I'll show them nice and clear for you guys. So, uh, oh, uh, Tasmig, uh, Taskmer Scheming. Um, this card here, I'm going to show it to you guys on this camera as well, uh, actually sees some fringe play. Now, yeah, fun little fact. Um, okay, so not much in the, un or the comment slot. First one we have, Dragon Grip sees zero play. No good. Teamer Charm, same as you. Also, no real play. Dead drop. That is a horrible common, uncommon. And then, oh, that's not good either. So we got High Sentinels of Ashria. Asheron? Again, I can't pronounce it. Either way, not any good. And I didn't I didn't even get a token. I got one of these things right here. That oh, nothing, propaganda card. Nothing on it. This is Ooh, ripped, ripped. not worth anything. <laughs> get out of here. Well, at least you just vented some frustration. So that's, that's yeah. therapeutic. Yeah, I'll just pretend it's a Boggles card. And then everything will be fine. All right. Uh, I don't know, treasure cruise anything? Treasure cruise is worth stuff. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, no. I mean, it's worth something, but not a lot. Um, at one point, it was worth a lot because it was fantastic. Now it's uh, banned and everything. Okay, we have a sc uh, scoured barons uh, dual land. Yeah. All right. Um, so our first uncommon is brave the sands. Next one is Secret Plans. Thirdly is Windstorm, and our rare is Sultai Ascendancy. Uh, Sultai Ascendancy... Actually, I don't think it sees any play. There was a fringe deck that was out there trying to play it, but I don't think it's actually worth anything. All right, so... And another one! You got one, too! Yes, now I feel better, just as much <laughs> as you. 
<laughs> okay, let's go for this next pack. So uh, hopefully we're gonna get a little better. We have Narset on the cover here, one of the Planeswalkers of the set. Um, oh no, she wasn't a Planeswalker. She was a legendary creature in this one. And then in two Dragon sets Star. later, when they you know, go back in time and then come back in time, she was a Planeswalker. Okay, okay so jumping through these, anyone that's looking can see if there's anything of worth value. I don't think there's much here. No, okay, so my first uncommon. We have Abzan Battle Priest. Meh. Become immense. This sees a little bit of play, uh, specifically at Infect. It's okay. Monastery Swift Spear. There we go. That's nice. the, the first actual money card for any of us. Yes. So I think what's this sitting at? Uh, it's sitting at a dollar fifty or dollar thirty right now. So that's worth something. And then I got a Teamer Ascendancy. Not really seeing any play at all. And then I got a Foil Whirlwind Adept, which doesn't see any play whatsoever. And then another, lots of these uh, non-token cards. Mm. I mean, I was going to rip this one up as well. Good. Uh, <laughs> I don't need it. It <laughs> goes to the recycling bin. Okay, go for it. it. This lets the steam off for the next pack. That's right. Okay, so your foil, uh, what, what uh, slot was it? A common or uncommon? It, it's a common, yeah. It's a, I'll even show it to the camera here. People can take a look at it. Oh, yeah, so, pretty. It's, uh, I mean, it looks nice. Uh, I mean, I wish it saw play, but it doesn't really see any play whatsoever. All right, so we have a, uh, a blood fell caves in the common section, just uh, of note. Okay, so let's continue to the uncommons. All right, so our first uncommon is Scion of Glaciers. We have Dragon's Eye Savants. We have Bear's Companion. And our rare is Avalanche Tusker, mm. which is a 6 4 creature elephant warrior with three colors in it to cast. Yeah. So maybe in some fringe set one day, it'll see some play. And you have another morph. I mean, that's. <laughs> I guess it's a thing. It could hold the one leg of the table up when it starts to wobble. Yeah, I, mean, I guess so. Okay. We're going for pack number four. Neither of us have opened any, like, really real money. Um, no, yeah, yet. so let's see if we can get one of those fetch lands. That'd be rad. Someone's got to have a happy story to tell. I, I hope so. Starting into my uncommons, I got Master of the Way. Sees no play. Not worth anything. Uh, Abzan Falconer, not worth anything, but I do have a deck on the channel that uses this exact card. So oh, uh, if you're you interested in building um, super budget humans, bing, this card does it. Um, and then I got uh, Saltai Soothsayer. Oh, That's God. a lot of S's. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, and then Sage of the Inner uh, Inward Eye is my rare. Next, no, back four. G no win. real luck yet. All right. Open something good for the yeah, both of us. We, we can't both be denied. I mean, it's crazy. It's a sad story to tell. We okay, have Jungle Hollow, which is like a black, uh, green um, land. And, and if, we, if either of us get into Popper, we'll have a variety of the lands. Absolutely. All right, so we have Goblin Slide. It's our first uncommon. We have Keru Bloodsucker. Mm. And our third uncommon is Dead Drop, with our rare being. Rattleclaw Mystic is the uncommon. Okay. Back to you, sir. All right, last pack. Last, last pack, oh dear. Last pack, let's see what we got. <laughs> Here we go, so we got Chief of the Scale, which is uh, uncommon. Pine Walker, meh. Salt Eye Charm, also not great. And then Master of Pearls, my rare. No luck, and a warrior token. So no, no big hits for me. At least I got another Monastery Swiss beer. Yeah, that's actually the best card that anyone's opened up yet. In some yeah, it's so a battle of the bulk. <laughs> Batter, battle of the bulk indeed. Okay, last chance. All or nothing now. Okay. All right, so first uh, uncommon is Abzan Battle Priest. Then we have Mystic Monastery, it's a land. Just guy Elder, and my rare is Master of Pearls. <laughs> well, I mean, at least we ended on an identical note here. So, oh Even makes I mean, it more intriguing. I mean, it made a lot of, uh, and more garbage. <sighs> I mean, it was nice. It's a nice revision to a set that I uh, hold near and dear to my heart. So this has been a nice thing, at least, opening up a lot of memories. 
Well, I can tell you one thing, the cash register digit positions won't be working too hard on this one. <laughs> it's in the single digits still, I think. <laughs> oh man, okay, well, awesome. So, can't wait to total this up and see who's the big bulk winner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what we got going for us at this point. I mean, you can't hit them all, right? You can't always open the money. Sometimes exactly. you just open The next battle fun. could be totally 180 and we're just, you know, touching things and turning to gold. You know, it can be just like that. Exactly. So, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for coming out to battle me. And, I mean, like always, if you are interested in checking out what uh, we do on either of our channels, links are in the description for both of our videos. Go yes. take a look at what MTG Canuck does. He is doing... What are you doing? Actually, let's do that. Let's do the end of video pitch. What do you do on your channel? Well, my friend, I do a variety of things. I like to have content creators come on board of my channel for an interview, question period. I like to vlog uh, GPs and pre-releases. I also like to do a lot of pack openings, and that's where my channel started, was opening up product, whether it be boosters or booster boxes, new or old. I did that also too. I do a little bit of MTG Finance, so I'll look at uh, card speculation and talk about it, you know, why it went up, why it's going down, stuff like that. How about yourself? Uh, my channel is primarily modern focused, so if you are getting into modern, uh, my channel is an excellent place to start because I do a lot of budget modern and budget modern into the more expensive modern. If you are familiar with modern, modern can be an expensive format. Uh, the top tier decks yeah, tend to roll in the 800 to 1200 range, so it's a little bit of an investment, so my channel is largely focused at how do we start playing with a 40 to $60 deck. A little bit more manageable, and then work our way into baby one of those more competitive baby games. steps. Baby, baby steps, one card at a time, kind of thing. No need to refinance your house. <laughs> yeah, at least initially. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Until the next time, stay tuned. We'll promise to do better. <laughs> Ciao.